because science is not just amazing, it is fun. All matter can be classified as pure substances and mixtures. But what is a mixture? If you will be asked, how would you define a mixture? That's great! A mixture is a classification of matter formed from the physical combination of two or more substances. Can you give some examples of mixtures? That's fabulous! Mixtures are subdivided into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Let us now distinguish one from the other. Homogeneous mixtures are one-phase mixtures. They have a uniform phase or a uniform appearance. While heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures composed of two or more substances that remain physically separated. The components of these mixtures are distinguishable and retain their physical and chemical properties. Since the only way that we can form mixtures is to physically combine them, how are we supposed to separate them? You're absolutely right. We can also separate mixtures by physical methods. So what are these physical methods of separating mixtures? Let us discuss the common and familiar ones. Can you give one? That's magnificent! First up, we have evaporation. It is a process that normally involves boiling a mixture and changes it from liquid to gas. Normally, this process leaves a residue in the container used for boiling. Components of solutions can be separated normally through this process. One type of evaporation technique that is used in organic chemistry is rotary evaporation. The process is used if you want to remove component liquids of interest like low boiling solvents from compounds which are solid at room temperature and pressure. The process is similar to a simple distillation setup. In fact, this is also known as vacuum distillation. They may look quite differently, however, the parts serve the same purpose. They both have a boiling flask where heat is applied to evaporate volatile materials. There is also a condenser which is a cooler region of the apparatus and a receiving flask. For the rotary evaporator, there is that rotating unit from which the boiling flask is attached. It is basically a motor that spins or rotates the flask to speed up the evaporation process. There is also an elevation rail that allows you to slide up and down the entire unit into or out of the water bath. There is that spiral condenser known as the Dimbroth condenser which creates a large cold surface area ideal for rotary evaporation. You can also find a port for attaching a vacuum line and ports for water lines so you can cool the condenser. What is referred to as the receiving flask in a simple distillation is now called a solvent trap. Another part is a warm water bath for evaporation and an ice bath to keep the collected solvent in liquid phase. Finally, there are tiles which control the rotation and the temperature. Next, we have filtration. This is the process of separating solids from liquids using a filter paper. This allows the fluid to pass through the filter paper but not the solid particles. The fluid that passes through the filter paper is known as the filtrate. You may separate suspensions using this process. Third, decantation. It is a mixture containing a liquid and a heavy solid like soil, and this can be separated by allowing the solid to settle at the bottom and then pouring out the liquid into another container. Centrifugation. This process speeds up the settling of the precipitate and uses a motor-driven apparatus called a centrifuge. 
This rotation process brings the precipitate or solid particles to the bottom of the test tube and then the supernatant liquid or centrifugate is poured off. Blood plasma and serum are collected using this process. In other words, colloidal particles can be separated using this process. Distillation. This is a process of separating a mixture based on the different boiling points comprising the mixture. Salt water can be separated and converted to potable water by this process. This also involves evaporation and condensation. Petroleum products are separated by this process, specifically known as fractional distillation. Fractional distillation separates a mixture into a number of different parts called fractions. A tall fractionating column is fitted above the mixture with several condensers coming off at different heights. The column is hot at the bottom and cool at the top. Substances with high boiling points condense at the bottom and substances with lower boiling points condense on the way to the top. Crude oil, for example, is a mixture of several components and can be separated into its component parts through a fractional distillation. It is evaporated and its vapors condense at different temperatures in the fractionated column. On the board is a diagram that summarizes the main fractions from crude oil and their uses and the trends in properties. Note that the gases leave at the top of the column, the liquids condense in the middle, and the solids stay at the bottom. And finally, we have chromatography. By definition, this is the separation of a mixture by passing it through a medium in which the components move at different rates. It distributes the components between two phases. One is stationary, and the other is moving in a definite direction. The components of ink, for example, can be separated by this process. Another separation technique used in organic chemistry laboratory is thin layer chromatography or TLC. The method is used in separating non-volatile mixtures, in identifying the compounds present in a mixture, and even determining the purity of a substance. Instead of using chromatography paper, TLC uses a supporting plate either made of glass, aluminum, or plastic, an absorbent layer for its stationary phase made of silica, for example, and a solvent system for the middle phase, altogether known as the TLC plate. Differences in the properties of the components of a mixture mean that they will each travel at different rates on the TLC plate. During the process, you need to prepare the TLC plate such as shown in the video. The experiment runs four lanes namely A, B, C, and D. Here, an unknown substance is tested that can be compared to reference compounds labeled standard X, standard Y, but the unknown substance can also be a mixture of both X and Y. Using a capillary applicator, spot standard X at the origin in lanes A and C. Use another applicator and spot standard Y to origin at lanes B and once again C. Then spot the origin in lane D with the unknown substance. To clarify, we have spotted standard X in lane A, standard Y in lane B, mixture of X and Y in lane C, and the unknown in lane D. A solvent is poured into our developing chamber. This is our mobile phase. We replace our spotted TLC plate inside the chamber. In a span of time, you will notice our solvent traveling up and in time, you will see a boundary between a wet and dry plate known as the solvent front. When the solvent front is closed from the top of the plate, the plate is removed and a line is drawn marking the solvent front. The common way of seeing developed TLC plates is to place it under a UV light source. Chemicals on the plate will usually appear as dark spots. Outline the spots with a pencil. By comparing lanes A and B, we can say that compound Y has traveled farther than compound X. Comparing lane C with those lanes A and B, we can say that the lower spot is X and the higher spot is Y. And comparing lane D with lane C, we can conclude that the unknown substance is the same as compound X. We can verify this by determining their RF value. 
The retention factor of a particular material is the ratio of the distance the spot move above the origin to the distance the solvent front move above the origin. It can be calculated using the formula RF is equal to distance spot moved over the distance solvent moved. The amount that each component of the mixture travels can be quantified using retention factors. This allows unknown substances to be compared to known materials. If the retention factor of an unknown substance does not match that of an unknown material, they are not the same compound. It can also be noted that the bigger the computed retention factor, the farther the spot or the sample move. From the video, the RF value of the unknown substance is close to the RF value of compound X. Therefore, the unknown substance is the same as compound X. How is TLC applied in real life? Traditional medicines based on plants and plant extracts are widely used in several countries. However, the active components in many such medicines are unknown. In such cases, thin layer chromatography can be performed on plant samples to separate the components. It is also used in forensic studies where body fluids such as urine and blood can be tested for the presence of drugs. With all the methods of separating mixtures discussed today, as a home activity, find out how do you separate a mixture composed of liquid substances with varying densities? And second, how do you separate non-volatile solutes from their volatile solvents? Hmm, challenging, isn't it? Let us now summarize what we have learned for today's lesson. 1. Mixtures are formed from the physical combination of two or more substances. 2. Mixtures can only be separated by physical means such as evaporation, distillation, chromatography, among others. 3. Rotary evaporation is used and separating volatile liquids from solutes which are solid at room temperature and pressure. 4. Thin layer chromatography is used in separating non-volatile mixtures. And 5. Separation of the components of mixtures depends on the properties of the substances present in that mixture.